Good afternoon, everybody. If you could please have a seat. Matt, good to see you. All right. Well, looks like most people found their seats. All right. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Michigan State University and to the facility for rare isotope beams, also known as EFRIP. I'm Thomas Glasmacher, the EFRIP lab director. We're so honored to have all of you here join us in person in a tent and online to celebrate the designation of EFRIP as a US Department of Energy Office of Science user facility. I thank all of you for joining us today, and I want to especially recognize our Department of Energy guests, MSU, MSU President, and the members of Congress who can join us in person. So thank you, Secretary Brulette, for coming. Um, thank you, Under Secretary for Science, Paul DeBarra, MSU President, Sam Stanley, um, Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin from our Michigan's 8th District, Congressman Wahlberg from Michigan's 7th District, that just starts south of here and then north of here, Congressman Molinar from Michigan's 4th District. Thank you all for joining us. I look forward to your remarks and for being part of today's program. We are also grateful to Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Michigan Senators Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters, both of them meant to come, but now Senate is in session, so they're not coming, but they have submitted remarks. I also want to acknowledge the other honored guests we have here today in attendance, uh, Michigan Representative Julie Brixey, Michigan Representative Sarah Anthony, Trustee Melanie Foster, the East Lansing Mayor Aaron Stevens, the MSU Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Teresa Woodruff, and the MSU, sorry, Executive Vice President, and the MSU Executive Vice President for Health Sciences, Norm Beauchamp. And then we have several construction and manufacturing leaders, those companies who helped build EFRIP and many other Michigan and MSU leaders. Before we go much further, I want to just um, note that we're outdoors in a large tent. I'm told the largest tent you can rent in Michigan and attendance is uh, limited to less than 100 people. Everybody is wearing a mask and we're six feet apart. And I want to thank you all for helping um, with these practices so we limit the spread of COVID-19. And it's a privilege to celebrate this day with all of you. A facility like EFRIP was been, has been discussed by the nuclear science community since the mid-1990s. DOE competed the siting decision in 2008 and selected MSU. And the EFRIP project then started in 2009 
Civil construction started in 2014, and technical installation um, it, it started in 2016. Uh, with the incredible project team and the outstanding industrial and commercial partners we had, we have been building EFRIP safely, on time, on budget, and ahead of schedule, and we'll um, start. <laughs> In the last year, we will focus on integration with the existing NSCL facility, and we're preparing for science in 2022. Being located on USC campus at the same time, we inspire students. We give them to us. We attract them into nuclear science, nuclear chemistry, and into the accelerator technology field. And through partnerships with other universities, we attract students to MSU so that we can now educate the next generations of science leaders who represent the diversity that makes up American society. 1,500 scientists are eager to come to EFRIP and to conduct their research because EFRIP will be the most powerful superconducting heavy ion linear accelerator in the world. EFRIP will afford researchers more than 1,000 isotopes that have never been produced on Earth. And the discoveries... <laughs> well, And, and the discoveries that the scientists will make of EFRIP, they promise to be life-changing, just like the rare isotope discoveries have been to date, where isotopes are used in PET imaging, in smoke detectors in your homes, to diagnose and treat disease, um, to diagnose cardiovascular disease, neurological disorders, just to name a few examples. Our whole team, we're humbled by having been entrusted with significant public funds to build this $730 million facility. That'll be a core piece of our nation's research infrastructure. So thank you again to all who have brought us to this exciting day. We are honored that you celebrate with us today and we look forward to celebrating together the world-changing discovery scientists will make at EFRIP. So at this point, it's my pleasure to introduce the 21st president of Michigan State University. He is a He's a nationally recognized leader in higher education who joined MSU in 2019 from Stony Brook, where he was also the chair of Brookhaven Science Associates. At Michigan State, he is a strong force for excellence in education, research, and outreach for student success, for diversity, equity, inclusion, and for health and safety. He is a physician and a distinguished biomedical researcher who specializes in emerging infectious disease. Please join me in welcoming President Sam Stanley. Well, thank you so much, Thomas, for your introduction, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And, uh, and actually not talking about COVID-19, um, which is amazing for me um, these days. Um, I want to begin by acknowledging and thanking all who are joining us today um, for this very important moment, uh, whether in person, uh, in front of us, uh, or remotely. Um, first, to Secretary Dan Briette and Under Secretary Paul DeBar, uh, my sincere thanks for your strong support of EFRIP. The Spartan community is honored to have you celebrate, the Spartan community is honored to celebrate with you the designation of EFRIB as the Department of Energy Office of Science User Facility. We look forward to continuing our close collaboration with the Office of Science, with the Office of Nuclear Physics, and the Office of Isotope R&D and Production, whether it is in the installation of future cutting edge instruments, such as the Gamma Ray Energy Tracking Array and the High Rigidity Spectrometer, and most importantly, of course, for the start of our full operations and the work of making the EFRIB isotope harvesting plans for the development of isotope applications a reality. Representatives Alyssa Slotkin, Tim Wahlberg, and John Molinar, thank you for being here today and joining us before heading off for Washington to important votes. Thank you. Your leadership in Congress has been vital for guaranteeing federal funding for EFRIB each and every year. I would also like to thank Senators Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters, who have supported EFRIB since its earliest days, and Governor Gretchen Whitmer for her tireless work in this area as well. And I look forward to their recorded remarks. Finally, I want to take this moment to acknowledge in our audience today our new provost, Teresa Woodruff, Board of Trustee Member Melanie Foster, our State Representative Julie Brixey, and Sarah Anthony, 
East Lansing Mayor Aaron Stevens, and all of the manufacturing leaders who have traveled here today from across the state and beyond. Thank you for everything you have done to make FRIB a reality. Today's ceremony is like few ceremonies before it due to the global COVID-19 epidemic that continues to challenge us internationally and domestically. But it is also an example of the perseverance, innovation, and creativity that our research have harnessed, researchers have harnessed to keep this amazing program on track. In a very real sense, EFRIB represents MSU's unique capability and scale as a research institution and is part of our vision for the future to continue to advance the common good with uncommon will. We are proud to be the first university team to collaborate with the DOE Office of Science on a user facility delivered under a cooperative agreement. And we believe that our joint venture will create a world-leading nuclear physics initiative that reflects both parties' commitment to excellence and frontier-breaking innovation. EFRIB will have the ability to create approximately 80% of all possible nuclei. I'm not sure how somebody calculated that, but it's really amazing. And, and this will give researchers the unprecedented opportunity to study vast, unexplored regions of our universe, to find the unique properties of rare isotopes, and in so doing, will help us better understand the physics of nuclei, nuclear astrophysics, while at the same time providing powerful applications to society in critical areas ranging from homeland security to fighting cancer. In doing so on a university campus, EFRIB attracts and will help train a new generation of nuclear scientists, accelerator scientists, and engineers, therefore seeding both academia and industry to create the talented workforce to help our global competitiveness and address the innovation deficit that may face America. Put simply, the research, uh, research endeavors at EFRIB will make the United States the leader in rare isotope nuclear science research, giving companies in Michigan and across the country a critical advantage in commercializing these discoveries. I want to end on a personal note. Uh, as was mentioned, I had the opportunity to run, uh, manage Brookhaven National Laboratory for the Department of Energy uh, for 10 years while I was at Stony Brook University. It was an extraordinary uh, responsibility and one that I think was very important um, for our entire university. But one of the things that we were able to do during that time was successfully compete for the electron-ion collider. So I spent about 10 years there and, of course, left Stony Brook in time to come here. They actually did the groundbreaking about two months ago, so I missed it. So therefore, in recognition of that, let me send my thanks and congratulations to President Luanna Simon um, for the hard work she did in bringing EFRIB to the state of Michigan. I didn't want that to go unnoted today. So thank you all. I'm excited to celebrate this designation with everyone, and I look forward to the start of operations in 2022 and the amazing innovations that will grow from Brookhaven National Laboratory. Thank you. I mean, the EFRIB. Well, thank you, President Stanley. Governor Gretchen Mitwer is a lifelong Michigander and an MS, MSU alumna. Governor Mitwer was elected to the Michigan House of Representatives in 2000 and then the Michigan State Senate in 2006. And then she was the first woman to lead the Senate caucus in Michigan. And in 2016, she was elected Michigan governor. Governor Whitmore is unable to be with us today, but we now will watch a video message she has prepared for us. Good afternoon, President Stanley, Secretary of Energy Dan Briette, and our distinguished members of Congress, MSU Board of Trustees, and community leaders. Unfortunately, my schedule doesn't allow me to be there in person with you today to celebrate the Facility for Isotope Beams designation as a U.S. Department of Energy Office of Science user facility. But I cannot let the significant milestone pass without recognition. During these tumultuous times, it's more important than ever to come together and acknowledge the things that are worth celebrating. And FRIB is definitely one of them. First, I want to congratulate all those who have worked over the last 12 years from ideation to implementation. You should be proud of your accomplishments and the impact your work will have for generations to come. With an investment of more than $730 million from the DOE, MSU, and the state of Michigan, FRIB will become the nation's premier center for nuclear physics research. It will serve as an international community of scientists who will use it to explore the mysteries of nuclear structure and the cosmos and to make discoveries for a better world. 
FRIB is also a game changer for the Michigan economy, creating 1,500 construction jobs and hundreds of permanent jobs for operations once it opens in 2022, attracting over 500 scientists from around the world annually and generating $205 million in tax revenues and $831 million in additional gross tax product through 2040. Since 1958, MSU has been known for its innovations in nuclear physics science, making an impact in the U.S. and around the world. In fact, MSU's nuclear physics graduate program has ranked number one since 2010. That makes FRIB an important part of educating the next generation of scientists and critical to U.S. economic competitiveness, energy security, nuclear security, and non-proliferation efforts. So enjoy today's celebration. It is well-deserved. And go green. Thank you, Governor Whitmore. Now we will hear recorded remarks from Senator Gary Peters, another MSU alumnus. Senator Peters served in the Michigan State Senate and was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2008 and then to the Senate in 2015. Senator Peters is a strong supporter of our effort and he has tirelessly worked to secure the smooth transition from construction to operation. We'll now watch a video that he has prepared for us. Hello everyone, this is U.S. Senator Gary Peters. I'm so excited to help recognize the AFREB at MSU as a Department of Energy Office of Science User Facility and welcome some of our state's premier manufacturers. I want to congratulate uh, President Stanley, Director Glassmacher, and the whole Spartan team for all of their efforts, as well as the incredible scientists, innovators, and researchers at EFREB for their groundbreaking work. This will be the first such collaboration between a university and Department of Energy delivered on time and on budget. With this distinction, the one-of-a-kind EFREB will provide unprecedented opportunities to study vast, unexplored terrain of over 1,000 new rare isotopes never before produced on Earth. These isotopes are critical in fields such as homeland security to biomedical sciences, and they're already helping support good manufacturing jobs in our state. Since joining the Senate, I've worked alongside a bipartisan group of Michigan's delegation to ensure strong funding for the EFRIB each and every year. And when I was one of the lead authors of the first legislation in nearly a decade to establish our nation's scientific priorities, I visited EFRIB and convened a roundtable where I received vital input, suggestions that I was able to then incorporate into my bipartisan bill that was signed into law. I look forward to continuing to support EFRIB because it is contributing to world-class medicine and science, it is boosting manufacturing jobs in our state, and it's important to our nation and national security. I can't wait to see all of the amazing things the team at EFRA will continue to do. Congratulations again to everyone, and go green. Thank you, Senator Peters. It's an honor now to introduce Michigan's senior senator and the third MSU alumna, Senator Debbie Stabenow. Senator Stabenow served in the House, Michigan House for 12 years and four years in the state Senate. In 1996, she was elected the representative to Michigan's eighth congressional district. And in 2000, she became the first woman from Michigan elected to the US Senate. Since its earliest days, Senator Stabenow has been a stalwart champion of EFRIP. And we will now watch a video she has prepared for us. This really is an exciting celebration today, and I wish I could be with you uh, designating EFRIB as a Department of Energy Office of Science User Facility is a really important step. Uh, so special thanks to our MSU President Stanley, and we're so glad to have our Energy Secretary with us, Secretary Buryat. Thank you for being here at Michigan State today. You know, this has been a long process to get to this point. Uh, as all of us who were involved in it know, in 2008, after intense competition, the Department of Energy chose Michigan State as the site of the revolutionary FRIB 
project and we had a, a wonderful bipartisan effort to support MSU's efforts from business and labor and community, state government, local government, our entire uh, Michigan delegation uh, spoke up and weighed in. It really was a truly Michigan team effort and of course we were backing the, the folks that were uh, the best project. So, uh, and I, I was uh, here when we broke ground in 2014. In fact, I still have my shovel and uh, we are still committed to make sure that the final funding is in the budget. That's something we work on every year together to make sure Michigan State continues to be on time and on budget. So we know how important that the project is to keep the United States at the forefront of nuclear physics and to advance our national security. It's also for us about jobs and opportunity in Michigan, creating construction jobs and hundreds of permanent jobs for scientists and engineers and other staff, and importantly, opportunities for students going forward. And I'm really excited about the fact that we are gonna be hosting scientists from around the world to be a part of this effort. So as a proud MSU grad, I am thrilled that my alma mater is training the next generation of nuclear experts. And you can count on me to continue to be your partner. And I'll see you at the ribbon cutting in 2022. Go green. Well, thank you, Senator Stabenow. It's now an honor and privilege for me to introduce the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Dan Barrett, an Army veteran with more than three decades of experience in the public and private sector, including in the auto industry, that's part of Michigan's DNA. Secretary Barrett's broad knowledge and experience make him a dynamic leader and champion for science and innovation. He has been an outstanding supporter of national laboratories and user facilities where he pushes the frontiers of science and discovery. He understands the promise of effort and the scientific discoveries it will enable to impact people's lives in very real ways. We are grateful for your leadership and look forward to celebrating with you the, the entire Department of Energy and the scientific breakthroughs that effort will make possible in the future. We're honored that you have chosen to visit Michigan State University in person to share the great news of EFRIP's designation as the DOE Office of Science User Facility. Welcome, Secretary Brett. Thank you, Tom, for that great introduction. It is so good to be back here in Michigan. I spent some time here as a member of the executive team at Ford Motor Company, and uh, I was expecting to see a little snow today, but uh, I guess... Uh, but I, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. It's a pleasure to be with all of you as we celebrate uh, this designation of EFRIB. And I want to say uh, thank you to all of the people who have been involved with this project from the very beginning. Uh, the governor mentioned some, the senators, the Congress people who are here representing their various districts. Thank you for the good work that you did in Congress. Thank you for the support and funding uh, for the Department of Energy and the efforts that you have put forth. This morning I had an opportunity to meet uh, as a small business roundtable with some of the manufacturers and suppliers and the trade craft to help build this wonderful facility. Thank you to all of you as well. I know how important this, this particular facility is to uh, not only us at the Department of Energy, but to you and the local community. And I think it's entirely appropriate that we do it right here uh, at Michigan State University, the top ranked nuclear physics graduate program in the entire country. So thank you. Thank you to Michigan State. Thank you, President Stanley. Thank you, Tom, for your support. Um, today, I think that we are designating, designating more than just a new facility. Uh, we're opening a new frontier in nuclear science. And at this laboratory, uh, which is poised, as the governor pointed out and others have pointed out, to be the most powerful of its kind, we will have unprecedented opportunities to study unexplored territory with regard to rare isotopes. And uh, I think as Tom pointed out uh, earlier, uh, over 1,000 new rare isotopes uh, never, bore, never before produced here on Earth. And uh, for those of you who like to do counting and like to do math, that's more than double of what is currently available. So it's a, it's a unique co collaboration between Michigan State and the Department of Energy. 
And in addition to the, uh, the fundamental science that will be discovered here, this laboratory also provides additional benefits, and some of them have already been mentioned. 1,500 jobs created here in East Lansing. Uh, we're going to strengthen our national security and our homeland security. For those who are not familiar with the missions of the Department of Energy, we are charged uh, by the country to maintain the, the nuclear weapons stockpile. The research that will be done here in nuclear physics will help us with that important mission. We will also be able to develop advanced diagnostic and treatment technologies to help us fight cancer and other diseases. And I have to add, as it was pointed out, this place is also very unique in the sense that over a 12-year period, a $730 million project, it was delivered on time and on budget, which is a rarity, a historical rarity for the federal government and perhaps for some state governments. Thank you for that. Um, and as such, FRIB is a transformative laboratory for both the Michigan economy, the Michigan economy uh, but also for fiscally responsible large-scale research. So thank you for those efforts. It's important for us to acknowledge, however, that it's not just solely a DOE and an MO MSU effort. Uh, today represents the realization of investments of more than $1.2 billion from the state of Michigan, other states, and indeed other countries in EFRIB and its predecessor, the NSCL, uh, since 2011. Technology transfer, uh, and commercial development will also be key to this important project. And the companies that come here will have significant advantages and opportunities in competing in the global economy. Finally, this facility will be crucial for training the next generation of nuclear physics and accelerator researchers. These outstanding individuals, today's STEM students, will be vital for our, na our nation's economic competitiveness our energy security, our national security, and as the governor pointed out, our non-proliferation efforts. So in partnership with all of you attending in person and online, it is now my distinct pleasure to designate FRIB as DOE's new scientific user facility, opening bold new frontiers in science. Congratulations to each of you. Congratulations to Michigan State University. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Priyat. Now I'm happy to introduce the Congresswoman of our district, Michigan's 8th District, Representative Elisa Slotkin. Representative Slotkin began her career in national service during which she served two presidents, first President Bush and then President Obama. Her early career has spent from CIA analyst and intelligence briefer to senior assistants on the staff of the Director of National Intelligence, senior advisor on Iraqi policy at the State Department, and advisor on Middle East policy to the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. In 2012, Representative Slotkin became Chief of Staff to the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Policy, and later that year she was appointed Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Policy. She then served as Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. They have long titles. And as Acting Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. In 2008, you became a member of Congress. 2018, sorry, right. And since the start of your congressional career, you've hit the ground running for your well-known mission focus in leading the bipartisan House support for the DOE Office of Science, for the Office of Nuclear Physics, and for AFRIP. Representative Slotkin, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to your remarks. Thanks. I haven't heard the long version of my resume in a really long time, so thank you um, for uh, honoring me with that. It is a great day to be here. Um, so Mr. Secretary, we're thrilled that you came here. Um, Mr. Undersecretary, thank you um, for accompanying him and honoring us with your presence. Obviously, President Stanley, thank you for everything you have done. And I'm thrilled to be here with my fellow congressmen, uh, Molinar and Wahlberg, um, demonstrating the seriousness and the bipartisan nature of our support for the FRIB. I will tell you that the first time I realized how important it was to be the representative of the FRIB was when I was driving with a young staffer. Um, who I just gave her a promotion. 
Um, this is in 2018. She called her parents. We were in the car together. She called her parents and said, I, you know, I'm going to be working for Alyssa now and on the 8th District. And her dad didn't seem very interested. And then called back 10 minutes later and said, that's the district that has the FRIB. And it turns out he was a uh, nuclear physicist and came and gave a speech here a couple a year later. So I, I got to be the representative of the EFRIB, which is a great, great thing. To the companies represented here today, um, your employees um, uh, helped to you know spread the word about what we are here in the Eighth District, um, what we're able to do in terms of our research, and how we're able to spin that off into a ton of new opportunities. I am not a physicist, as was said. I'm a former CIA officer and Pentagon official, now member of Congress. You've heard what the FRIB can do, um, but I just want to say um, a. a few notes on how this grand, this groundbreaking research, um, it really, on the building blocks of our universe, um, how important it is to be doing this here in our district. Um, we've made it a priority, along with my peers, to fund the EFRIB and make sure that we get the resources um, that it needs. We were able to give it another $40 million this past funding cycle. Thank you. I know Congressman Molinar is on the Appropriations Committee. Thank you, Congressman Molinar. Um, over a billion dollars invested in our district. But beyond the, the science, um, as a national security professional, I will just say that having this opportunity here makes us safer and stronger and more competitive as a country. Investments are, interest, are important for national security and for distributing our architecture so that we're not doing all the research all in one place. Um, and it's critical that we maintain our competitive advantage, right? If someone else is doing this research and not us, that is uh, an implicit threat to our country. We want to make sure that we are doing the most groundbreaking research in the world. Um, and now this is MSU's real anchor for providing um, our role in the national security of the, of the United States. It also has, has been mentioned a very bipartisan effort. Um, we work together to secure the money um, uh, to make sure that we have what we need here. Um, so today is a victory for science and actually a demonstration of how government should run. Right? We have a facility that is best placed in one of our groundbreaking universities. We have bipartisan support for getting the money that it needs. It's a victory for those who believe that we do better in our nation when we work together on common goals. So thank you for the opportunity and congratulations to everyone working on the EFRIB project. Thank you, Congresswoman Slotkin. It's now my Honored to introduce our next speaker, Congressman Tim Wahlberg. Congressman Wahlberg is currently serving his sixth term as representative of Michigan's seventh district, which starts just south of here. And he has served in the Michigan House of Representatives from 1983 to 1999. And he had established a reputation there as a principled legal legislator, fiscal reformer, and defender of traditional values. And you first represented your district from 2007 to 2009, and then you returned again in 2011 to serve. But as a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Representative Wahlberg has been a longstanding, strong, and effective advocate for EFRIP. And we were honored to have you speak at the groundbreaking with Senator Stabenow in 2014, and we're just as honored to have you back here today to celebrate this day. Welcome, Representative Wahlberg. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It's good to be back, this time without a black eye. If you remember last time, I uh, tried to make you believe that it was because of the fights in Congress trying to get the funding for this. Um, but it was just falling on the ice. And that's probably why, unlike Debbie Stabenow, uh, I didn't get a shovel. I did get the hard hat. And maybe that was probably to protect me. But it's so good to be here. Um, I wish one person who was here, uh, Secretary B.A., uh, it was, was, was old Harold Hilbert. And Tom, you remember Harold. Good friend of mine uh, who uh, was intimately involved in even laying some of the stones and, and planning what went on here. Uh, but, Secretary, it's good to see you uh, in a place other than being grilled in the Energy and Commerce Committee in front of, front of the committee. Under Secretary, it's great to have you and, and Dr. Stanley uh, to be with you here at this great institution. I mean, this, uh, I wouldn't miss this. And when we have the ribbon cutting, I hope, 
I'm able to be here as well. This has gone on a long time. I remember as a member of the Michigan legislature back in the 90s fighting for what we call the superconductor super collider. I failed quantitative chem, so I didn't even know what that meant for sure, but I knew it was important. And as I drove past visiting my uh, aunt and uncle in Batavia, Illinois, and saw the Fermi lab, and knew that we were in a battle to bring it here versus going to the Fermi lab, uh, that began the efforts that I've been privileged to be involved with over the years of trying to prove that this was the place that a facility like this should be, an esteemed research facility at an esteemed research university that not only could do the job that we expected to have done for science, for security, for all that goes on with what can be produced here. And I, I'm glad to hear today that next week, as a result of this, we're going to have the cure for the coronavirus. I didn't know if that was to be put out. But more importantly, a facility that involves students in the training, the understanding of what this could be, what it would be, what it could result in, in bringing to the world, but also the students that might stay here and continue the research and development, but many others who would have the opportunity for an on-hand experience in education for something that looked to the future as big as this, could then at the very least branch out all over the world and share the thrill of what was developed here. And so that's the excitement for me, whether I ever understand what goes on here. And Tom had the privilege to walk through several times with you uh, during, the, during the construction thus far. Not really understanding it, but understanding the impact that it could have for good in the world today. So I applaud you. I applaud all the construction uh, companies that have been involved here. I applaud all of the research that's been done, the engineering. And I look forward to having my grandkids experience what can come from this to the benefit and the good of our civilization. God bless you as you continue finding things that we can ultimately find and have known to man. Well, thank you so much, Congressman Wahlberg, and we hope you'll be back in 22. So I'm now pleased to introduce Michigan Representative jo U.S. Representative John Molina of Michigan's 4th Congressional District. Congressman Molina began his ten tenure as a public servant in the Midland City Council and then was elected to the Michigan House of Representatives and in 2010 to the Michigan Senate. As a member of the U.S. House Appropriations Committee, Representative Molina sits on the Agriculture Subcommittee and the Labor, Health and Human Service Education Subcommittees, two subcommittees critical to the foundational bedrock and the future of the Spartan community. But since your days in the, on, on how science, space, and technology, and now in your leadership position in appropriations, we really appreciate your support, and um, your support's been invaluable in bringing effort to a conclusion. Thank you for being here, Representative Molina. We look forward to your remarks. Thank you very much, Tom, and I appreciated the tour a while back, and I just want to greet my colleagues. It's great to be with you. We're all going to be rushing to the airport after today. Um, Secretary, Undersecretary, Mr. President, uh, what a wonderful celebration this is, and uh, what a great investment and a great place to invest. Um, you know, I have to confess I'm not a Michigan State graduate, but I have a daughter who recently graduated from Michigan State and a son who's currently enrolled. And the one question I had was, when they say go green, aren't we supposed to say go white? Or how, how does that work? Am I missing that? All right, okay, I just wanted to make sure. But it's, uh, you know, as someone, I grew up in a community that really valued science. It was Midland, Michigan, and uh, Dow Chemical was located there. And for me, I ended up being a chemistry graduate. And the reason I went into that is because I could see people involved in science, and there were people who came alongside me and helped me learn math and science, and I wasn't intimidated by it. 
one of the great things about this is that you're going to have the next generation coming up, not intimidated by science, but welcoming the opportunity to participate in science. And mentors who will be around who can guide them on an international basis. And to me, that's very exciting. It's a great investment. Um, you know, I think now more than ever, we're valuing and appreciating the importance that science plays in our lives and the importance of mobilizing the scientific community to work on some of the great challenges we face as a country. And right here, we're at the cutting edge, and I'm grateful to be part of this today. And I just want to say congratulations to the entire Spartan community, and go green. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Representative Molinar. So now I'm honored to introduce Under Secretary for Science, Paul DeBar. Under Secretary DeBar is the department's principal advisor on fundamental energy research, energy technologies, and science, driving this mission through the programs, including nuclear and high energy particle physics, basic energy, advanced computing, fusion, biological, and environmental research, and the direct management of a majority of the department's national labs and their world leading user facilities. Under Secretary DeBar also leads technology commercialization activities for the department and its national labs. A former nuclear submarine officer, he has tra traveled to both the North Pole and the South Pole during his time in government service. And, you know, you've proven you really go to the end of the world for science. <laughs> so we look forward to you pushing the limits of scientific discovery, and we want to push them with you as we move closer to operating EFRIP as a um, user facility with scientists here. Thank you for coming, and we look forward to your remarks. Well, I'd like to echo all the comments that the, uh, Secretary Briette said about the importance of this facility and the director for really getting us there. For anyone who's been in this building, it's truly a national lab scale facility. I'm waiting for some member to, de to, to actually propose that. So, just <laughs> um, uh, obviously, the members who are here today, thank you very much for your support for appropriations. Uh, and I can say that uh, with the strong support of the sciences and innovation coming out of Congress on a very bipartisan basis and the budgets being uh, signed by the president, uh, with, with, our, with our investment up 32 percent since we've been in leadership, uh, which, by the way, is not unique, uh, NIH, NASA are all up on the same level. I think America is in a different place on a very bipartisan basis of where we're going for innovation uh, and driving it forward. And this is an obviously an excellent facility to point to it. Today's designation as a user facility uh, shows our commitment to the nation for science and for nuclear physics. For those of you who may not know, the Department of Energy's predecessor was the Manhattan Project. Uh, and so DOE was uh, conceived of by Albert Einstein in a letter to FDR in 1939. And with the founders of, uh, of our agency being Niels Bohr and Lawrence and Oppenheimer, uh, and Zillard and Fermi, nuclear physics is the core of the department. Uh, and everything that came from what we do today came from that core area. So this is a continuing of the mission that started in 1939 uh, with the Manhattan Project. I think as everyone has heard, uh, creation of rare isotopes has a wide degree of applications in medicine, uh, in understanding how the universe was formed. Uh, the the $1.2 billion, as the secretary mentioned, uh, which included significant support by Congress and the federal government, by the state, and a very large contribution by the university uh, was uh, is truly amazing for, uh, for a facility that is not on a national lab. And, uh, uh, and, and it is wonderful to, to, to be continuing to work with President Stanley, as he mentioned, was mentioned. He was uh, the, the manager of Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, and so his experience uh, of us working together on yet another extremely large user facility. We very much appreciate working with him going forward on this. So thank you for your leadership here and also previously at the National Lab Complex. So thank you. <laughs> and was mentioned, this was completed on time and on budget. I'd like to point, to point that out to the members. I can never say that enough, as the Secretary said, uh, because our job is not only to do what we do for science, but do it well. Uh, so that the investment of the American people can be seen 
as being spent well and being managed well. And I think that this team has done a wonderful job and shows, uh, and shows that this department can go ahead and do that. Um, there are many different applications, obviously, for this. I'd like to point out on one that I was talking about earlier with the, with the, the team that was here uh, during the manufacturing. The production of isotopes has, uh, and, and, and nuclear physics has broad applications for life sciences. Probably many of you have done uh, a nuclear stress test for your heart to identify, so that's MOLLE 99 or TEC 99, just one of the 40 elements that the DOE produces every year with us in the university system uh, that uh, takes, that, that is there to cure cancer, to do imaging of your heart and your cardi cardiovascular system, I've had it done myself. And without that and what the investment here and going forward, because it's not just about the 40 that we produce right now at DOE and at facilities like this, which this will be the number one in the world, was, was that currently we have 20 different isotopes under research that could be used for future cancer treatments. So this facility will help cure cancer. This, this facility will probably help a significant portion of you in the room to understand if you have cardiovascular disease and how do we come up with new isotopes to do that. That's just one example of what we do. And obviously, as other applications for isotopes, they're done for radiography, for pipeline, for oil and gas drilling, uh, for nuclear propulsion, which is obviously my background, uh, and, uh, and nuclear power uh, associated with that. So there are, there are great applications as, uh, associated with this. And with this day and this dedication, this brings this facility into the DOE National Lab Complex, the greatest complex uh, adding to the 60,000 people who work at the 17 national labs. This is really a national lab scale. And the sort of record that this will bring here, uh, we certainly hope will, will, will continue the overall record of the department. I'll give you one example. 40% of all the Nobel Prizes in physics in the world were done at the national labs. People who worked at the national labs are funded by DOE. And 25% of the Nobel Prizes in chemistry in the world were uh, supported by the department. And I expect, President Stanley, that there's a possibility there's a Nobel Prize coming out of this facility. Is that something you're going to commit to? OK. <laughs> Uh, and just this last year, uh, the Nobel Prize for lithium ion chemistry, which obviously affects our everyday life, came out of DOE. Uh, and so uh, this department and this facility is joining, has a long history. There's been, my count, four national projects in technology that have changed the world. They've all been in America. And the four have been the Manhattan Project, the Apollo Program, the Digital Revolution, and the Human Genome Project. And if you think about those great, those great national projects and investment of the federal government, academia, and the private sector, this facility was a direct uh, derivative of one, the first one, uh, which was the Manhattan Project. And we look forward to this facility contributing. So uh, under the president's leadership, bipartisan in Congress, the Office of Science, and academia in the state, uh, I think this is a great example of America pushing the bounds uh, for economic uh, impact, national security impact, and for scientific discovery. So thank you, everyone. So thank you, Under Secretary DeBar. So at this point, we invite back President Stanley and Secretary Brulet to take to be positioned next to the plaque, and then after that, we invite all the speakers back on stage for another photo. So if all of you can join us for one more photo, that would be great.